You were just standing there with the wind in your golden hair. Didn't know your name, but I can feel it with a very heartbeat. Every time we're about ready to leave on a six week vacation with our grandkids, five of them, to the Pacific Northwest. So, tomorrow, less than 24 hours from now, we're going to hit the road. We're actually going to go southwest on Route 66 first and take that for a ways and then cut up north and eventually after about 10 days we will end up in the Pacific Northwest. But today, today is my 53rd birthday and we're celebrating my birthday where I grew up. <laughs> Smells good. I am out ready with you. <laughs> what were you saying? All right, so that was a nice little birthday celebration. So now we're looking on to the vacation that's coming up. So six weeks on the road, starting tomorrow. Then we'll get a good night's sleep. We'll spend uh, about half the day here visiting tomorrow with my parents and our youngest daughter, Janelle, before she heads back to Kentucky. And then we will hit the road. Day one of our Route 66 to PNW family vacation. We named it that last night. So we're still in the driveway here at my parents' house. They're fixing a nice breakfast up at the top of the hill. Chris just picked up some last minute things from Walmart and she's getting stuff ready inside. Uh, we're also waiting for a few more of our grandkids to get back down here. Um, they were all here yesterday for my birthday, but they went and spent uh, the night with uh, one of their aunts and they're gonna be coming down here. So once they get down here, we're gonna go through the plan with them, show them all the destinations we have in mind, uh, and then we are going to hit the road. We invite you to come along with us on our Route 66 to PNW trip, lasting six weeks with five grandkids and two dogs. Chris has got all of the slides in and got it all ready to go. She's brought the Jeep up here. I'm gonna go down and get the RV, hook it all up, and then we're gonna hit the road on our Route 66 to PNW vacation.
First stop at the Route 66 Rocker. It's the second largest rocking chair. It used to be the largest rocking chair. It's a place called the Outpost here in uh, Fanning, Missouri, right outside of Cuba, Missouri. So we're gonna check it out and get some pictures. Outpost. That's where that world's second largest rocking chair is, and it's actually huge in here. They've got a great gift shop, so all kinds of Route 66 uh, signs and memorabilia, candies, popcorns. In Fanning, Missouri, right outside of Cuba, Missouri, it's just off the Interstate 44 on Highway ZZ, which is old Route 66. So it's definitely worth the stop. Probably spend 20, 30 minutes here at the most. We're just finished with the. Uh, Route 66 outpost, what would you guys think back there? It was fun. It was, it was lots fun. of fun. The lady was very nice. Budge. All right, Did on to Merrimack Springs. We can play in some cool water for a little bit. We're at our second stop outside of St. James, Missouri. It's Merrimack Springs Park. And the uh, parking lots aren't necessarily real motorhome friendly. Um, but we found a, uh, a secret spot. I don't think it's a real parking spot right back there. And we're walking back to the spring. So there's a lot of parking right by the main spring. But again, it looked like it was uh, not real friendly for a Class A that's towing because we can't back up. So we didn't want to get back in there and not be able to maneuver our way out. So we're going to go check out the springs. There's a playground. There's a hatchery. Grandpa. Just gonna hang out here for an hour or so before we continue on down the road towards Springfield. Lovers come, lovers go. I still love the more. 420 million gallons is the My maximum flow. Average is 96 million gallons. It's just the way it is. It's like a star. <laughs> I'm motionless in this world of stories. Like a star.
Springs Park. Right behind me is the Merrimack Ironworks. It was the first steel factory or steel mill west of the Mississippi, and the remains are still here. We're going to check those out now. We've arrived at Fantastic Caverns outside of Springfield, Missouri, and uh, we are going to boondock here. So there's no signs that say anything against boondocking. There's some gates on the parking lot, but they were not closed. Uh, they closed about 8 p.m. We got here about 8.30. Um, there's still some employee cars in, so we're hoping to uh, find word that it's okay, but we don't see any, uh, any signs against it. And we are going to plan on going on the first tour in the morning. So hopefully they will uh, let us stay here. Basically we're gonna spend about a hundred bucks here and tours. All right, so great news. Uh, all the employees left, the last employee came up, stopped outside, I went outside and said, we heard that we could stay here overnight, we got a tour in the morning. No issues, but they do lock the gates, so you're locked in if you stay here, you can't leave. So basically, better make sure that you're gonna be here all night if you're going to want to boondock here at Fantastic Caverns. I'll, I'll sit there and make sure nobody sits there. Come sit. Come sit so if you're looking for a place to boondock in Springfield Missouri this is a choice but I would say it's probably only a good choice for you if you want to do a tour and visit the place the reason why I say that is it's about five to six miles off the beaten path and it's kind of uh, curvy and a narrow road so if you're in a large RV you're gonna to want to take it slow probably come in the daytime uh, before darkness so you know get here 7 8 p.m. before the sun sets find you a good parking spot and stick around for the tours the next day it's a ride through caverns tours start at 8 we're probably gonna get up get ready and go somewhere between 8 and 10 a.m. depending on when we're ready so check it out 